Donald Trump is now calling on an electoral change to Nebraska, pressuring the legislature to change the way that the state doles out its electoral college votes. If you're not familiar with this, which I'm sure many Americans are not, let alone people outside of the US, most states, 48 of the 50 states in the US, whoever wins the popular vote in an election, in a presidential election, earns all of that state's electoral college votes. That's how almost all of them do it. In the case of Nebraska though, they instead do it based on the popular vote win for each congressional district. Meaning that you can win some, but not all of the electoral college votes. And in the vast majority of elections, that's how you'd expect it would probably work, although not necessarily. So Donald Trump wants that to change, and he posted this to Truth Social. Governor Jim Pillen of Nebraska, a very smart and popular governor. That just means I want you to do something. He has no idea how popular or smart Jim Pillen is, neither do I. But he wants something, so he's complimenting him. Who has done some really great things. I don't have time to be specific, but trust me, great things. Came out today with a very strong letter in support of returning Nebraska's electoral votes to a take all system. Most Nebraskans have wanted to go back to this system for a very long time. Here, let me paste poll results. There's really no time, we'll press forward. Anyway, the thing is, the reason he wants this is not because most Nebraskans want the change. I tried to find polling on this and what do you know you can't because it's hyper specific. I don't think most Nebraskans even realize how the electoral college votes come out and look, it's a right wing state, so if you polled them and if you made clear to them that it's in their political advantage to change it, sure, probably most of them do. But it's not like they're pushing for it because that's what the people want, so we have to deliver. There's another reason why they're doing it. It's probably pretty clear, if not, let's break it down. In 2020, Joe Biden won one of the congressional district's electoral votes from Trump. That means that Trump, who got 58% of the vote there, got four out of the five Nebraska electoral votes rather than the five that he would get if the state was winner take all. Before we continue with the story, we depend on members to keep on going. Don't wait, click join now on YouTube. Bear in mind though, he got four of the five, that's 80% of the electoral college votes. He only got 58% of the vote. A case could be made that he's already doing quite well for himself, but that's not enough. And um, so that's, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, they see it in their political advantage, they could get an extra vote, they want it. There's no ideology, there's no political theory that has to do with this. I'm not even saying that there's a strong ideological case to continue it. It's just the way it's been and they're changing it because they think it would advantage them. But it might not be clear exactly how. You might think based on how I described it, it's one vote, okay. It's something, it's nice to have. No, it's not just nice to have, it might be crucial to have. And here's a hypothetical that should probably make your hair stand on, on, on end. Here's a scenario for the 2024 election. In it, Joe Biden wins Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin of the seven or so swing states that are believed to actually be up for grabs. Mr. Trump wins Arizona, Georgia, and Nevada, in which it could make the difference between a Biden victory and an electoral college tie. If it's proportional, well, not proportional, but like congressional allocation of electoral college votes, Biden becomes president in that scenario. If they succeed in changing it to winner take all, it's a tie. And that is not like, well, what do we do then? No, we know exactly what happens then. If that in that case, the election goes to the House of Representatives, where the distribution of votes to decide who becomes president is no longer proportional. It's strictly allocated based on the states and Republicans control more small rural states. That means Trump wins. Now, I'm not saying that this particular scenario of the swing states is super likely, but it's in the realm of possibility. And all you need to do to turn a loss to a win in that case is change how Nebraska works. Now, so far, they have not been successful. The bill apparently sat around too long before Trump decided that that was something he wanted to push for. And the legislative session is nearly over, nearly over. It's not actually over, there are still a few days. And as of right now, it looks like in a bipartisan fashion, the it, Nebraska actually has a unicameral legislature. Nebraska is weird in a couple different ways. They voted it down. And look, I don't know all the individual state legislatures that legislators there, but I would say, Considering that it is to the benefit of the Republican candidate and going forward would be to the benefit of all Republican candidates likely. 
The fact that so many Republicans actually voted against it is principled, I guess. So credit to those unnamed Republicans. But that said, they are now facing a lot of pressure. Donald Trump, who can provide a lot of pressure, is doing that. You have people like Charlie Kirk, who are not even trying to hide the fact that this is nakedly partisan. He's trying to get his viewers to call in people from outside of Nebraska who don't know about Nebraska, don't care about Nebraska, don't even know. They don't even know that it has a unicameral legislature. They're trying to pressure them to change. And is it impossible to imagine that they would be successful in that? I don't know. I don't know. Look, if it's the difference between being primaried, the next time around, then maybe they change their vote. And look, maybe the expectation is that it's too late to do it this time around, primarying them. And will Donald Trump actually remember next time? Probably not. But if it's you, if you're one of those who joined with Democrats to stop the system from being changed, are you gonna gamble your political future on Trump forgetting about that? Trump is a petty SOB. I think it's more likely that he's not around for the next election than that he suddenly lets bygones be bygones. So anyway, um, this is a scary potential scenario. Uh, again, I think a case can be made ideologically for either system to work. The thing for me though is the status quo is the way it is. The political calculation in terms of presidential elections has been the way it's been for some time. Changing it now without even providing a smokescreen of some sort of ideological argument for it just doesn't make sense to me. And the reason that I'm so concerned about the hyper focus on Nebraska isn't just the implications for the 2024 election. It's because is it impossible that another state would change in this way? Now, like, think about what sort of formula, how this could be formulated. So imagine if you had a state that is controlled at the state level by Republicans. And generally goes for for Democrats for the presidential race, but the the Republicans get thirty or forty percent, and could expect that they would get a couple congressional delegations like those areas to vote for them. What if they were to change to proportional allocation? Would they? Is it impossible that they would do that? You have multiple Republican state legislatures, which when a a Democrat wins the governorship. They amend the law and the constitution to strip away the Democratic governor's powers. You have it right now, I forget the state, it might be Tennessee, where they are removing the Democratic governor's ability to appoint a replacement senator on an interim basis. They have been perfectly willing to throw all chaos like uh, to the winds for uh, short term political advantage. And this is an arena that we have not generally seen that. But could it be the next frontier? in trying to eke out a couple votes here, a couple votes there, maybe make the election possible to win? I don't know, it's a rhetorical question, do you think? I don't know, I'm worried about it, that's all I can say. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.